Well, hey there, folks. So I just ordered this uh, hood lift strut kit here for my Jeep JK. want to get the prop rod off of there and put some of these uh, struts on there. Like any modern vehicle should have under the hood. So we'll go ahead and go through this together and figure out how to put them on. So here's a little box that came in. I ordered them on Amazon. So you're going to get two struts. Just like that. You're going to get two brackets like this. There's the two brackets there. You're going to get the hardware right here. A couple of these little metal brackets here. And then you're going to get these other two brackets here. So let me get it figured out and I'll show you how we're going to get these installed. Stand by. Okay, so this looks to be the first step. Got these 10 millimeters holding your fender on. Just pull this one out. Here's the bracket. Bracket will fit right on there. You can see the 10 millimeter bolt will go back in there. And it looks like there's already an existing hole here where we're going to put another bolt and a nut. So let me go ahead and get those tied in. And there seems to be some uh, misinformation on the listings about whether this will fit in 07 to what is it the 07 to 17 or if it will just fit i believe it's the 11 to 17 well this is an 08 and it looks like everything's in a bolt up fine so we'll find out okay folks so i usually you know i glance over the instructions sometimes with this stuff it's easier for me just to look at the pictures than it is to read the jibber jabber they got in there but um, these ones, it's, it's, the pictures are so small, you really can't see anything. So it's simple enough. You know, I can just look at this and figure out what goes where. So, you know, you're going to have several of these um, Allen bolts here with nuts. And it's, it's self-explanatory where they go. They go on this bracket, which I screwed these on before I put on here. I tightened these. Um, so your stock 10 millimeter bolt goes back in there. This fender washer looks like it would go there. You got another one of those Allens with a supplied nut behind it. Put it on there, left it loose because of course there's gonna be some adjusting to do, I'm sure. So that's where that one is. And let me go ahead and get to the other side. We'll just copy it and do the same exact thing. All right, folks, we got a big fitment issue here. Going to put it on this side. I removed the 10 millimeter bolt that lines up. But uh oh, look at that. We got something in the way. How am I going to attach it there? No, I'm just kidding, folks. I'm just being a smart ass. But in reality, do you know how many people would actually see that as a problem and probably send these back and give this a bad review because of that? So all we have here is a little plastic clip that holds these two relays. You can see that, a little push clip. So let me grab my little cat claw and I'll go ahead and pull that out of there. Stand by. Okay, folks, didn't even need the cat claw, just needed a Phillips screwdriver. So it's just one of these that has a little plastic screw in the middle of it here. You just simply unscrew that, set it aside. And then this other portion here will just pop right out of here. And you can save it to use somewhere else in your vehicle. See? Now they're loose, they have a hole through it. So we can put a nut and bolt right through there. Stand by. All right, so here we go on the passenger side. Got the 10 millimeter back in. Use this in place of the little plastic push retaining deal. Got the nut on the back side, holding those relays on. Stand by. Hey folks, well I've got my son in the room. He's on the other side of the garage here and he's in there blasting his music. So you can hear the bass. But anyway, here's the next step. So we have these two brackets here, and we have these. So these are obviously going to hold the top of the strut. These are probably, I'll figure it out, these are probably going to go underneath like that and probably be held in by, well, you know what? It doesn't look like they gave us enough, screw, uh, enough hardware, does it? Huh. It sure doesn't, because I only have two of these little ones left. Two of these big ones left. 
You know what? I bet these ones were four on the fender. They wanted me to use a little longer ones. Let me change those, and then I'll have four of those. Okay, stand by. Okay, folks, crisis averted. See, now I don't have to return it and give the seller a bad review. Just joking. Okay, so we have four of these. They just wanted the two longer ones to go right here. I mean, I don't think you need all those threads, but that's where they wanted them to go, obviously. So now we have these. So these are basically just going to sandwich like that. And this oval little part here is obviously probably going to go right in here. And then it'll clamp down. So let's get that step done now. All right, so you can see how that's assembled. Pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and get that in there. So obviously trying to put it in, you can only um, get it in if you have one bolt in. So let me remove one. All right, so let me show you this. See how it's in there now? I only have one bolt. Now I can turn this around and I can get the other bolt in there. Okay, stand by. All right, folks, looks like I might have had this upside down before, but there you go. That's how it goes. Just sandwiches in there. See how it holds it. Now we can just center it and tighten it down. Okay, folks, then the last step. We just have to align this ball stud here up with the deal there. Put this nut on the back side. Okay, folks, so this one's on. And this is how they want that bracket, um, according to the instructions. Now to do it like this, the shock does, or the strut does have to be forced over a little bit to go this way. It almost seems like it would be better on the other side. It would fit more natural. That's the way they have the instructions. That's the way I'm going to do it. And as you can see, these brackets, they are angled a certain way. And if you look at this one, it's shorter in the back and bigger in the front. So just note that when you install it. Let me hold the other one up so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is on the driver side. And this one here, you can see if I put this one on here, see how it's a different angle. So they want that one on the driver side. Let's go do the passenger side. Okay, folks, we got the other one on. You can see on the passenger side how it goes. Both of the little larger parts point toward the front of the vehicle. So now that everything is uh, in place, I went ahead and tightened all the hardware. We're going to give it a shot and see if it works. Okay, we're going to give it a shot. I haven't tried it yet. We're going to pull down on it together. Okay, we're going to go all the way down with it. I guess the only thing I don't like about it is, you know, there's still pressure on it right now. It won't matter when the hood latches are on. I guess that's the only part I don't like. Let's unhook this and see at what point it starts to go up on its own. Yeah, it works. Oh, they kind of look like they're on backwards, but that's the way they wanted them. So that's the way the bracket tree was. So that's what I did. Um, it works. It definitely does what it's supposed to do. No more prop rod. So there you go. All right, folks, fairly simple. So the biggest takeaway is just make sure these brackets are on right. Leave all the hardware, you know, just, just leave it finger tight until you get everything on here. And then once you get everything on here, just go ahead and lock it all down. Um, what I did, you know, I just tried to center that in the middle there between the slots. And on these ones, I just slid them all the way back. Seemed to work pretty good for me there. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. I did buy these on uh, Amazon. I'm tired of buying stuff on eBay and not having to get here and fighting with sellers. So I just get everything on Amazon for now on. This Hook Road brand, I bought one of their products before. I bought a spare uh, five-gallon uh, jerry can carrier for my spare tire on my previous Jeep, my TJ. And I thought it was a real solid, well-made product. I had no problem with it at all, so I bought from them again. And uh, you can see what, what's in it. I mean, it's, it's real simple. It says 40 minutes, one to two people may be needed. Um, I don't think so. All you need is one person, in my opinion, and 
you know, um, probably like, I mean, I was going slow in the video. I see it's 10 minutes on the video, but you know, you, you could do this all in all 20 minutes, but yeah, 20 to 40 minutes, I suppose. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps someone. Y'all be good out there.